Hi everyone in English 2323, it's Dr. E and I'm here with the instructional video that kind of goes over the guidelines and expectations for your journal portfolio. So this is something where I, I'm offering a video so that you can just think about the work that's ahead of you that's not necessarily due now, um, just so that you can kind of get a sense of the assignment and start preparing for that. All right. So here are the guidelines, which will be posted in D2L. Um, so our goal is to go back to some journals and work to revise and edit them. Okay. So most of this is really focusing our time and attention on this notion of revision, but this is also counting as our research paper for the course. Okay. All right. So it's not considered plagiarism because this is work that I am asking that you go back to and reuse and revise, right? Um, I don't expect you to submit the exact same thing that you submitted the first time, uh, but there will be areas, right, that may look similar um, and in other courses that may be considered plagiarism, but this again is part of the requirement and uh, I'm offering my blessing for that. So this is really something that I want you to take with you is this idea that revision is so useful. It's so important. It's, it's, I can't put a value on it that will translate well. It's really important so that um, in all your future classes, if you're able to set aside just a little bit of time to put your piece of writing away and then go back to it with fresh eyes to reflect on it, to revise it, see if everything still makes the same kind of sense that it did when you originally wrote it, maybe visit with a tutor or maybe have a friend read it. Um, so we're just practicing some of those really useful writing strategies. Even though this is a lit course, we do have that writing component that's required. Okay. Um, are there things that we need to write for this collection if we're just revising? Well, yes. You're going to create one abstract paragraph and that's per revised journal. Uh, so you'll have two of those. I'm just getting ahead of myself a little bit. And you're also going to need to create a works cited page. Um, and that includes any sources you reference. So this is where a lot of times things go off the rails with literature courses just because sometimes we're referencing biographical details for an author those need to be cited separately from the actual short story by the authors, right? Because, you know, James Joyce didn't write his own biography. Um, the editors from our course text did. So we need to credit the editors for the biographical details or those background chapters if you want to include um, some of that context, which I really encourage. Um, so we need to make sure that we, we think about that when we're putting together a works cited page, right? Okay, so you're going to add an abstract paragraph per revised journal as well as that works cited page. But I really want you to consider the fact that you've already done a majority of the work. You've submitted those journals, you've put that work into it. Um, so don't be overwhelmed by this, okay? There is an MLA help module in D2L, and of course, there's the link to the Purdue Online Writing Lab website. So if you have uh, questions about MLA or work cited or anything like that, you have a lot of resources at your fingertips, and this doesn't even include if you wanted to uh, seek out some tutoring assistance, which I definitely recommend. All right, so each of your revised journal entries will start with an abstract paragraph, and that is something I want you to kind of consider a letter to me. This is a way for you to go back and just reflect on that original submission, um, or if you didn't submit it the first time, maybe share why. You know, and I'm not looking for apologies or anything. I just want to get a sense of the context of what it took to revise and work on this, right? Are you thinking differently about a topic? Um, are you wishing you had gone a different direction with this journal entry? Any of that kind of stuff. Or do you see yourself as getting stronger as a writer or stronger as a reader because you're looking back at this and going, yeah, I think I would do it a little bit more um, in depth, right? Or it's just a time for you to reflect, but that's about four to five sentences of you doing that, okay? All right, so the overall criteria, you're going to have two revised journal assignments, and I'm just picking journals one and two. Let's just go ahead and pick those. Um, each entry needs to be at least three paragraphs, and it needs to be longer if that was the original assignment. So if journal one was originally um, a two paragraph assignment, it needs to be three paragraphs now, okay? So we need to have kind of a set amount uh, that we're covering with each of those revisions. 
and each needs to utilize at least one source. And this should be easy because they're based on sources, right? So it shouldn't be hard if you didn't the first time around to go back in and make sure that you're utilizing quotes, things to support your ideas, okay? Uh, each entry needs a source, okay? Um, we also need an abstract paragraph in italics. So remember italics, you know, it's just highlighting, clicking that little eye up here. Um, this is going to make sure that your paragraph kind of is offset from your revision. I encourage you to add first person information about the content of the journal. What did you, you know, so this is what I want you to think about in the abstract. Everybody's is going to be different, right? Everybody's going to have something different to say, and that's good. Four to five sentences. Of course, we need to follow MLA guidelines and include all of this information. There will be a template. Please use it. I'm just saying, why not? All right, and the portfolio needs to be submitted in the proper format, right? So no JPEGs, no uh, pages, none of that. It needs to be one of these three, essentially. Okay, and then uh, again, make a tutoring appointment. Why not? Uh, again, you've written these journal entries and uh, I'm trying to think, I'm not sure the grades have been finalized for journal two. It doesn't matter. You'll get feedback from me for sure, but as you're going through and reworking and revising, consider uh, getting somebody else's input on that, that final product that you have, okay? And then of course, watch the instructional video, which you're doing now. And then if you're more kind of, you need that actual rubric in a chart, that's what is right here. I'm not gonna go through and read it all uh, because we should really be looking for that awesome kind of grade, right? I'm gonna show you an example. Um, this is the first time that I've actually assigned uh, this journal assignment. So I don't have a specific example, but I have another assignment that looks similar it will I want you to see how it looks on the page because I think sometimes that helps right so this is for what was a writing collection in my writing classes and so you'll see everything is MLA formatted um, this is an actual student's submission she allowed me to share it I've made sure she's anonymous and all this uh, and so you'll see that this is a paragraph that is italicized and it's our author sharing her experience right so um, my first revised response, uh, it was fairly easy for me to write. Since this assignment was towards the beginning of the semester, I feel like I've grown in my writing. One thing I focused on was making sure I had a good thesis statement, you know, so, <clears throat> excuse me. This is just giving me some background, right, about the whole experience. And then no space, no nothing, right into that revised, uh, for you it would be your revised journal, for this person it's a response, right? So um, utilizing research and all the paragraphs, you know, that are being referenced, properly citing according to MLA. I'm going to scroll down. This student wrote quite a few paragraphs. Then there's a space or two, and then she goes right into her second abstract paragraph. Again, offering some specifics about that revision process, about that, about those ideas. And then no space or anything, just a change in, they're no longer italicized, so I can see the difference between the abstract paragraph and then the revision. And so then, you know, she's using research in every paragraph, referencing these things, writing good size uh, paragraphs to really make sure that her ideas are being uh, communicated effectively. Scroll down, okay, she's done, but now she needs to have her work cited, right? So she has her work cited that's properly formatted according to MLA guidelines, just as you would. Um, so for you, you'd want to follow this format, have what's called the hanging indent here, right? And uh, reference um, Greenblatt if you're going back to one of those intro, uh, the period chapters, or you can always uh, just reference Greenblatt for any of the biographies. If you are referencing James Joyce, then you have Joyce there. You have to reference specifically each entry, okay? And if you have questions about that, definitely let me know, but there will also be a template that might have some entries that are already there. All right, so again, this is something for you to just kind of let this, let these ideas kind of marinate a little bit um, so you can see in the future when this work is due, set aside the kind of time uh, to, to submit this work and let me know if you have any questions before then. All right, take care.